Hey everybody, welcome to episode 117 of Making It. I'm Bob Feigen, here with Dave Picciuto. One second. One second. How <laughs> are you doing? <laughs> that was really far back. <laughs> that was well done. <laughs> and Jimmy Dressa. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> We're all in a good mood today. Yeah. Jimmy got us laughing before we hit record, so... <laughs> we'll try and recreate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to surprise you with it. <laughs> you know, one th- you know, a lot of times when we go on these trips, uh, Bob and I will share a hotel together. And I come home and I'm always telling Kelly, like, Bob cracks me up. Bob is hilarious. <laughs> like, you, you do show humor in your videos uh, once in a while, but I don't think yeah. people truly know how funny you are, Bob. And then Jimmy, <laughs> wow. Jimmy's humor is, is blowing up in like the <laughs> vlogs and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, his Instagram, his Instagram stories are fantastic. So, thank you, well, thank you. The three of us are starting a comedy troupe. Yep, <laughs> that's what we're here to tell you. Yep, <laughs> podcast is over. It's all stand up from now on. That's what we're gonna do. Starting a city five city tour. Yeah. Well, well, what's going on, David? What are you up to? Well, I recently just put out a shop tour video. That was a. Um, We'll call that uh, the emergency penguin. Uh, didn't yes. I was I wasn't quite ready to shoot a video, and yeah. uh, and on Tuesdays I have to shoot a video because that's when Eric comes over, and so I'm like, well, we're gonna wing it and do a, a shop tour, and uh, it came out. It was 20 minutes long, but it's a it's a quick read. So if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's fun. Um, don't bring the kids because um, <laughs> we get we get we have a little fun in there. And uh, I'm not ready to reveal what I'm working on this week just yet. Hmm. Which is code. Hmm. Code for I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's cool. Jimmy, what about you? Um, I'm going out to, if anybody's listening in the, in the Zanesville area, May 6th is John Saunders and New York NYC CNC is having an open house. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to meet the machinist side of YouTube. Is going to be uh, Mr. Pete's going to be there. Adam Adam Booth's going to be there, and a bunch of other guys in the uh, YouTube machining world. And so when I was out there in February, we kind of came up with the half joking idea. I think it was January. I was there. We joked around about making a cannon and having a cannon competition. And so that is what I'm doing. I'm working on my cannon for that competition. What's it? Is it going to be different than the other cannon? Oh uh, yeah, no, it's <clears throat> it's it's going to be slight. It's going to be basically the same size, but it will be slightly different in the way that it, uh, it's a, it's from a different area. They're both British cannons. The first one I made and the one I'm making now, but this one's slightly different in its styling. But when you look at cannon after cannon after cannon, they all basically look the same. So the styling is going to be slightly different, and the pedestal it sits on, or the carriage or the cart that it's on, is going to be made out of steel. I found this design in the Edinburgh Castle, and so I'm going to plasma cut the stand. So huh. it's uh, it's going to be slightly different, but the idea, if you notice on Instagram, we're all kind of going back. It's me and uh, the guys at uh, Saunders, John Saunders, and uh, another guy whose name I'll pull up in just a second. Uh, we're going back and forth, kind of like showing off what we're working on and saying, you know, it's kind of like a friendly, uh, friendly, tough talk, you know, about who's who's going to be better kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm working on a new Rockler video, and I got a little stalled only because I'm between shops and I have router bits up here, and I got routers down there and i don't have my router jig up here my router so it's it's kind of stalled me but this is only a temporary so i might get back on that project late tonight nice yeah. so um when you did the first canon assuming that you've never done a canon before that uh, was there anything about that project that you like after using it and shooting it and all that stuff that you were like oh man i totally did this wrong or uh, something i want to do different next time or no honestly no i mean while I was working on it, I had the revelation that there are guys like, and I talked about Marco this week and Marco uh, Terenzi who makes little miniatures. And then there's the whole world of guys that make miniatures. And those guys make things absolutely accurate. And for me, that stresses me out because I'm like, there's going to be the one guy that notices the wheels the wrong shape or this or that. And so I let go of all that when I made my first can. And I was halfway through, like, and I was kind of stressing, like, Oh, I'm trying to pick this cannon from this certain period, and I'm trying to make it exactly perfect. And then I got to a point halfway through it, I was just like, I, I, it doesn't matter. I could make anything I want. It's inspired by this period piece that I found, and 
the bo- the bottom or the carriage is inspired by this other piece I found, which I like the combination of both of them. So I did it. And so the same thing with this. I'm inspired by this Edinburgh Castle cannon that I happen to see on somebody's Instagram picture. I researched the cannon and I found some better pictures of it. And I'm basically copying it. But it's not going to be absolutely accurately duplicated. So once I let go of those restraints that aren't even restraints, they were just self-imposed, I'm, I'm having fun. Hmm. And, sitting, I'm, nice. and when, when I do shoot it, I'm not going to put like 10 caps of black powder in there because... It might just blow up the whole thing. I just, you know, put in a cap or two. Because we're not really trying to storm a castle. We're just trying to, like, shoot a piece of fruit or something like that. But it's good to have that option. Yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm going to storm a, a third-scale castle <laughs> with third-scale people <laughs> with third-scale weapons. That's another several projects right there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the third-scale castle in your on your property somewhere. Yeah, they're building it now in the back. I saw the, uh, nice. the Huns are working on it. Awesome. Um, well, I've, so for the last month or so, I've been ahead. I've had, like, at one point I had three weeks worth of two videos a week online ready to go. And I have chewed through that lead time, <laughs> which is kind of a drag. But let me show you guys, since they can't see this. Uh-oh. Let me show you guys what I'm working on. Remember that secret project? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, and, oh, and it's not yes. working. Oh, it should be oh, working. Oh, no. Hang on. Uh, is that a candy is cane? No. <laughs> it's not Christmas. It's not working. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. my God. Jimmy, you know what that's going to be, right? I think so. It's going to be for candy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm this thing that I've been working on for a couple of years. Keep them dumb. Keep them dumb. I'm finally um, really close on. I, I decided that I was just going to like just finally get to it. So I'm uh, last maybe four days, four or five work days. I've been just kind of, you know, getting through it and still got a long way to go, but making progress and hitting some hurdles here and there and stuff. But anyway, I want to get this thing done out of my life (laughs) and move on. (laughs) I mean, the bad thing about that is that it's eating up my lead time that I had. Um, So now I'm not ahead on videos at all anymore. And that's kind of a drag because I need to be, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so this will be a couple of weeks from now. Uh, the video that will be out this week is a spinning... I just made, like, a, a really simple uh, spinning organizer for, like, paints and prop supplies and just a bunch of, like, little supplies. I, I Now that I've been doing all this prop work, I have tons of, like, different adhesives and primers and different acrylic paint tubes and all this, you know, stuff. And it was kind of spread out all over the place. Anyway, so I made this really simple uh spinning box and it's got some shelves in it that are angled down on the back so when you put in like a tube of paint it's going to fall down a little bit you know so they won't fall out when you spin it Mm -hmm. and uh then there's a little kind of basket that sits on top of it with a handle that is locked in place and you can pull it off so all the adhesives and knives and all that stuff are in there so i can take that with me to whatever i'm working on so That'll be coming up. I think it'll be handy for people, especially people with small shop. It's a good way to organize a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then today, I'm on my two video a week thing, my testing ground. And so today, I put out a, a review for a 3D printer for the Sigma. It's a dual extrusion printer. It's really cool. And by the time you're hearing this, so tomorrow, I'm going to put out a video about giving one of those printers away. So this is like a $2,700 printer. Mm, and nice. uh, we're giving one, me and Matter Hackers are giving one away. So I'm, I'm really excited to get that out there to kind of give something to people. And it's worldwide, you know, it's open to everybody over 13, age 13. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I guess, what I've been up to. Spent the time in the pool this weekend. Well, I actually didn't get in the pool. I painted, but my kids were in the pool this weekend. <laughs> uh, it's finally hot enough here that we got the pool open and clean. And is that the dirty pool? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, it's not dirty anymore. Though <laughs> no, I saw you on Instagram. You were saying this isn't actually dirty. This the bottom yeah. is. Yeah, it's it's funny because so most people cover their pools with like a tarp, giant tarp, and so dirt shouldn't get in that tarp. Um, so when you take the tarp off, it should be pretty relatively clean. Uh, you just need to shock the water, but the kind we have, the top is a, uh, called a safety cover. And so I had to embed these, these like pins in the concrete all the way around the pool. 
and then you put the safety cover over it, and it's tight to these pins. So you can walk across the pool hmm. when the cover's on it. And that's for safety. That's so, you know, if a kid falls in with the cover on, they don't get wrapped up in a tarp and drown because they can't get out of it, or dogs, or whatever, because uh, that's pretty common. So th- these things are way safer, but they're made out of, like, a really fine mesh. So silt and dirt falls out of the trees, you know, like all that stuff that breaks down on top of it just falls into the water and gets at the bottom. So when you take the cover off, it looks like a lagoon. It's, like, nasty black, but it's really just a layer along the bottom. So... Every time I show a picture of that part of it, everybody's like, man, why don't you take care of your pool? It looks so nasty. <laughs> like, I'm taking care of my kids. That's my goal, <laughs> not keeping the bottom of the pool clean. But, yeah, so we got that clean, and uh, kids are out in it, even though it was super cold. So that's what I've been doing. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good weekend. By the way, yeah. I forgot. I made a sign this week. It's been on my, it's on my Instagram. Of uh, By this time this comes out, I will have released a video of me hand cutting this sign and I looked at the sign and I analyzed it and and I was like you know what it'll be just easier to hand cut all these things out because people talk about hand making versus CNC and you know I do a CNC sign and everyone's like oh what a waste of time well you wasted my time by showing me so I want to see some skill <laughs> so on this sign I, I jumped right in and I started just cutting it on the bandsaw uh, because everything's got its limitations and its problematic situations and so for me to set up every one of these letters on brass and then you know potentially have to do like 30 passes because you can't just cut one eighth inch thick brass on one pass so each one would have had to be you know 20 thousandths deep cut at a time it would have taken forever so i just said let me just jump in with the bands on do it so um so I'm explaining that because when the video posts, it's not going to have a voiceover. And people are going to say, why don't you just use the CNC? Everybody that didn't want me to use the CNC is going to say, why don't you just use the CNC? It would have been so much easier. But everything yeah. has its problems. You know, so you can't just like, it's not like cutting melamine or you know, MDF. It's brass and you know, yeah. everything's got oil. And then you can't, you can't literally glue it to something else because it's just not possible. So anyway, that's the reason why. So, are you talking about the the uh, the circular sign? Yeah, blade and bow. It's a new it's a new yeah, brand of, of bourbon from Kentucky. So, I guess I saw footage of that in your vlog. Yeah, I just showed a couple of yeah. seconds of it. So, how fast did you speed up those shots of you cutting those letters? Oh, because it doesn't look that fast. It doesn't look like it sped up that much, but it looks like you're cutting through a lot of material really quickly. Yeah, no, I, I speed it up like maybe eight or twenty. You know how in iMovie you got okay. two, four, eight, and then I think twenty. I usually mm. go to 20 because I'm cutting really slow. Just to, If you notice when I do bandsaw blade, small letters like that, I always try and at least keep the line. That's This way I know where I am in space. If I keep the line, I can always just kind of split the line of whatever the, the pattern is. So I cut slow to make sure that I keep the line. And by keeping gotcha. the line, I can always take a little bit more out. So the letters are all, you know, a couple hundred thousandths thicker than they would be if I CNC'd them. But even the one when you CNC them, you could say cut on the vector, cut next to the vector. Yeah. So I always just try and cut right next to it when I'm hand cutting mm-hmm. it. And so I go slow. So It would be interesting. I don't know where you would do this, but it might be interesting to show some of that stuff in real time mm-hmm. so that people have a comparison of like what you're actually doing. Because that particular shot, to me, looked like it was a little fast, but not crazy fast. Mm-hmm. Well, you I'll know? do. And I so do it do that. Like you were actually moving fast. I'm picking. I'm not done with the edit right now. I mean, I'm almost done, but that's a good idea. I'll go back and put add a couple of more of when I just pick. I just clip a little section and then just hit. You know, show normal speed. So it'll yeah. show normal speed for just maybe ten seconds and then go back to speed it up again. People, yeah. people are digging that. But I can't. It, it, I, I can't even watch the video when when it comes to that. I just jump through because even that's too slow. So <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about doing something, and maybe this is the video where I'll try it. I, th- I was thinking about doing a voiceover version of this for the Patreon. So I'll put the voiceover version on Patreon, and then I'll just do the speed it up one. Because if I put the voiceover version on my channel, I'll get a bunch of the guys going, you know, you're talking in your vlogs, now you're talking over your work videos. I can't listen anymore. Yeah, no one cares what you have to say. <laughs> well, those are the people you ignore. It's yeah. your channel, yeah. and your video, and your voice. So. <laughs> exactly. I've been watching you for three years now, and you never talked, and now you talk. All of a sudden, you're talking. Ugh. Talk less, Unsubscribe. work more. <laughs> That's a new comment. Talk less, oh, nice. work more. <laughs> Don't you have a podcast where you can talk? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah. So that that's something I'm going to try. Maybe I'll do that. Cool. I'd like to see that. 
Um, we have like a micro topic and then a fun little, unless you guys got anything else you want to talk through. I do want to say, uh, I, I have a video coming out this week on my new favorite finish, which is shellac and just like normal shellac that you get at the Home Depot. And I've come up with a, a sanding and buffing system that I just absolutely love. Mm. And this is, and it's super quick and it's really hard to mess up. And so that video should be out by the time you listen to this. What's the drying time for shellac? Uh, sometimes it's, it's as quick as 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Really depends on your humidity. You're mm. in Savannah, so maybe 25 minutes. <laughs> maybe 25 days. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> like nothing dries <laughs> here at all. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, cool. Yeah. Hey, Dave, can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Are you keeping that cool whip of yours, that new whip you were showing off on Instagram today? Uh, no, I am, I am not. So, uh, uh, I'm assuming you're referring to the 1967 Chevy Impala. Yes, sir. It's very sweet. Yes, that, that was, uh, that was my dad's car and, um, I did inherit everything, but my dad wanted it to go to his brother. Oh, cool. And that's where it's, so after we get all the probate court stuff done and then I'm just going to sign it over to him. Nice. Um, even if, uh. My dad didn't want him to have the car. I, I probably would give it to somebody else in the family just because I don't have a good way of storing the car and keeping up with the maintenance on something like that because it's a beautiful car and it's a car that needs love. Yeah. And I'm not, real, I'm not really a car guy yeah. and I don't really have the space to be a car guy. Yeah, so, well, that's cool. Um, though. But it's cool that it's going gonna, it's gonna <clears> to <throat> stick in the family and I can still... I can still go look at it. I can, you know, still go for rides in it. My my dad, my dad got divorced. My mom and dad got divorced when I was two years old, and uh, he bought that car. So this would have been in 1977, um, right after the divorce, as a as a kind of a, um, a like a gift to himself to to help him mm-hmm. move on to the next stage. And so I've always remembered this. Even my furthest memories go back to him owning this car. And me driving it when I'm like 12 years old and completely scared, and <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 a really cool car. Uh, one one of these days, I'll tell the story of how I drove it into the garage. Uh, <laughs> Dad wasn't too happy about that, um, but yeah, I, there's a lot of memories associated with that car. Very cool. And the follow up yeah. question is: Wayne's going to get his own channel? <laughs> <laughs> he, he is not. Uh, Jimmy, you've been paying attention to the Instagram stories. <laughs> Sorry, he, he is not. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was just so cute when he got excited and he jumped up and down. He reminded me of Lucky. <laughs> Aww. It was cute. All right. Awesome. So now now I'm ready for the, the micro topic. Okay, micro topic. Stealing people's videos. Let's talk about mm. that for a minute. Let Let's me talk release about some <laughs> frustration. We can we can we can broaden it to, to yeah. property too. Yeah. Designs and, hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 So I, this came up because we were talking beforehand. Uh, there's a, a I, I don't want to get into specifics because that's just not my deal. Um, Jimmy, don't. I can see it on your face. I know you want to. <laughs> just don't. I don't think that would be wise for us to do. Okay. But there is a company who has a very short but definite track record of taking people's videos that include one of their products and putting it on their YouTube channel. And it's really uncool. And it's happened a couple of times. And it happened again today or yesterday. Um, Even after the hubbub that they had with me. Yes. It's happened to Jimmy and I and Johnny Brook from Crafted uh, Workshop. And, and, and Welding Tips and Tricks. Oh, really? The very first time I talked to him about this company. Because you know what those people did? I had a <laughs> conversation with them. And I said, yeah, this is how much it would be. And then... Within a few weeks, they took a video that that I, that their tool was in. Just took mm. it and recut it and reposted it and regrafted it with their graphics and everything. Yeah, so that's what happened here. And so this came to my attention because <clears throat> this video was found by uh, I don't remember who found it actually, but it was found on a different Facebook page under a video. And so I wrote them and I said, "Hey, this is not your video. Take it down. This is my video." And the guy came back and he was like, hey, man, don't accuse me of stealing. I just I just uh, shared it from this brand's page. So I go to, and it turned out that the tool brand put it on their Facebook page. And once something is in Facebook video, it just gets shared in every possible way. And, you know, it's and so this other woodworking page or whatever just reshared it. So it shows up in all these different places. And it's just 
I mean, I hate to badmouth any tech company, but Facebook is just becoming a more and more of a problem in this way for every type of content. Yeah. Once it gets there, there's no way to find it all. There's Every no day I'm to... getting I'm getting videos that like you know it's on like man man stuff and it's like you know my bottle cap video <laughs> gets knocked off yeah. every week and I find it and it's got a million views or more every one of them. Yeah. The AK47 gets knocked off. I'm up to you know we talked about content ID. I'm up to over a thousand re-uploads. That means a thousand <laughs> times somebody has took one over a thousand times somebody's taken one of my videos and re-uploaded it. That's insane. And it's it's so, mostly always the the the, gar, the gun guitar one, but it's it's every yeah. one of them at one point. So in the past, I've talked about how there was a channel. I think I talked about it on the show, but there was a channel that literally posted every single one of my videos. That was the only thing on the channel, and mm-hmm. it's got to be some sort of a script that they can run now that yeah. just downloads all the videos, all the metadata, all the thumbnails, and then re-uploads it because they were in sequential order. Uh, they had everything you know, that they should have as if they were on my channel. It was like a straight duplicate. And that's a lot of stuff. I mean, you couldn't do that by hand. So I got in touch with YouTube and I said, you know, this, they're copying this, this, and this, and this. And they took a few of them down. And then all of a sudden the whole channel was empty, but it was still there. So then I went back to it the next day. Um, and they had changed the channel name, like in the header and started uploading all these videos from another channel. (laughs) <laughs> doing the same thing with different people's content. And that, now that particular channel is like, no more. It's not there anymore. But so after this Facebook copy thing yesterday, someone this morning sent me um, another YouTube channel that is uploading every single one of my videos. And as I was looking at it, they were being uploaded. Like, I refreshed <laughs> the page, and there were like four. I refreshed it again, and there were like eight. <laughs> I mean, they were going up, and they it's it's... The same thumbnails, they put like a little HD tag in the corner for some reason. Um, but it, it's so frustrating. And I mean, YouTube is good about if you tell them that's there, they'll remove it, you know. Uh, but I don't you know. know it's, it's funny. Just a, it's I try to upload, a bigger and bigger problem. I try to upload one. I, a couple weeks ago, I uploaded a video from Make. And it was already... I, I uploaded like one of my old... like I, don't know, I was making the treasure chest or making a key or something. Uh, just as like a space filler, so I put up a repeat, and and I went home and I realized it didn't upload. So when I got back to my computer, it says this video is already uploaded. Why do you want to re-upload? And it like canceled it. So there is a mechanism that realizes the video. So I went back in my list. I didn't realize I uploaded it three years ago when I gave it to them. It was on my channel private. So I just turned that one on. I said, oh, never mind. But I'm like, why does it let everybody mm. else upload the same exact video? And I couldn't even upload my same video. It's like, by the way, this is already uploaded, so we canceled it on you. I guess maybe they just can't check everybody. But I also know that there's been a a history of people doing different things, small changes to a video so that the algorithm can't compare. You know, Mm -hmm. they'll, like, flip the image so they can't do a visual comparison. And then they do audio, and then they'll, like, pitch shift the audio up or down a little bit just so it's, you know... Um, You'd be surprised at what it does find. I mean, even when people take my videos and crop them smaller or put them on like a, you know, blurry background or something. So it's just like a window frame inside of another video frame. It'll find that. And uh, if people will post a logo across the whole thing for the duration of the video, it'll find, it'll find. I'm really surprised at what the algorithm can find. Yeah. So a lot of those tricks don't always work. But if it flipped at 180, I wonder if it could find it. That's a good question, too. I'm sure it probably could. That seems like it'd be a pretty simple math thing to figure out. Mm-hmm. But I guess I don't really have a point to talking about this other than that I'm frustrated and it continues to happen to everyone. Not, yeah. you know, I'm not just saying not me. Um, mm-hmm. And I will say that the people who watch our videos, at least for me, are super awesome about telling me that they found something. Like people constantly. You know, when that stuff is up there, they'll send me a message. Hey, I just found this. You might want to check it out, get rid of it or whatever. And that's great because I can't police that stuff. I can't find that stuff. And yeah. so you know what it I'm is? really gra- grateful it, for those people. Uh, people are watching something either from you or I or one of us, and there is a knockoff version of it. it the, the YouTube suggests it. It's like, hey, you like Bob? Maybe you like Bob. Bob's clone. Here's Bob's clone. He has the same videos. <laughs> YouTube will suggest it because I asked my fans. I was like, "How do you guys find out of the? They never know these. They never suggest them to me. They're like, oh, it, it just shows up in the suggested video page, you know, on the mm. sideline. It always just shows up in the sideline. So it's like, oh, if you like Bob, maybe you like Bob's knockoff. 
So they they are they are tagging them accurately, I guess. I mean, that's how I found a lot of them before I got the content stuff. So yeah. What do you think about design? So past videos and stuff. What about? You have any thoughts on people like taking your design? No, you know, Does that bother you at all? So far, no. Besides just ripping the video, which is obviously annoying, nobody's really ever taken a design maliciously. And I, I encourage it. I encourage it now. I, I always say I'm 100% open source. But if, if somebody, like, for instance, if a company came out and started selling the gun guitar, because we tried to sell it and it you know, really wasn't successful. We didn't work on it that hard. But just asking around, if a kid's going to buy a guitar, he's not going to buy some hokey gun guitar. He's going to buy, you know, Les Paul or, you know, Paul Reed Smith or something nice. He's not going to, or Stratocaster. So I don't expect people to want to buy that guitar. So we didn't work on it that hard. But there is this, a company that makes little knockoff guitars out of, out, of the, out of Asia somewhere. So I was Googling my name once, and it says Jimmy DeResta Guitar. So I clicked on it, and it's a little tiny version of the Skull guitar I made many years ago. It's like a flaming what? skull. And it's... It's made by a company that make, manufactures little tiny guitars of every guitar ever made. And mine seems to be the most popular one. So this flaming, screaming skull guitar that I made years ago for ESP, which they made 50 of them and like a duplicator. Now they would have just used a CNC. But I made that in 1990, so that's how long ago that was. So they made 50 duplicates. And then it, I guess the pictures online, the searches are popular enough where they made these little mini ones. So I was just going through eBay and I, that's where it came up. It came up through eBay. So I followed the link and I said to the guy, I'm like, hey, I, I didn't sanction this. How did you get this? Where did you get it? And the guy wrote me directly because he knew me from YouTube. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know. I honestly didn't know where these came from, but I never expected you. He goes, I just buy them somewhere else and sell them here. He goes, I didn't know that you – he apologized a thousand ways to Sunday. So he I wasn't – I get caught. Sorry. Yeah. Well, he wasn't – you know, he was just a street dealer. He wasn't the actual guy who's like putting the cocaine in the bags, you know. So I have to find the actual source. I didn't work on it that hard. It's some Asian company that I'll never find. But they make these little mini guitars. So when I saw that, it annoyed me because if they are making money, I'd like at least a piece of it. Um, and going back to that guitar, I can give you guys just another little backup. So – I made that guitar for ESP in, 2000, in 1990, 91, right after I got out of school. I got hooked up through a guitar player friend of mine that was like on his way to becoming famous, but he's, just, he's been a studio musician all this time. He never got super famous. So Adam hooked me up, and I started making guitars. So I sold him that Flaming Skull guitar. And it was my idea. They licensed it from me. I made, I don't know, $20,000 at the time, which was a lot of money. And then I never heard from them again. They moved out of New York. I never heard from them. And now fast forward like 25 years. And I'm like, what is ESP up to? So I go to their website and boom, there's the guitar. Now it's a paint job. It's no longer an actual carving like the one I made originally. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I, find, I go, go through my old emails. I actually find Matt, the guy that owns the company. And I find him and I email him. And I say, Matt, this is Jimmy DeResti. Remember me? I go, this is my guitar design. Do you remember it was trademarked to me and it was actually mine? you remember all that? And he immediately writes me back. He goes, oh, my God, dude, I'm so sorry. I've been looking for you. I couldn't find you anywhere. This was just before <laughs> YouTube. Oh, this okay. was just before YouTube. So this was just before my new YouTube, right? So I should put it that way. So this is in like 2010. And he says, uh, he goes, I'm so sorry I couldn't find you. And, uh, oh, actually... My, my lawyer friend said to me, he goes, I go, do you want to send them a letter? He goes, find the guy and just write him an email. He goes, if he gets weird, then we'll do the, lo the legal stuff. So that was my friend's advice. And so he writes back to me and he goes, what can I do for you? He goes, he goes when I do the math, if I give you a royalty of this much, I forget what it was. It ends up to be like $7,000. So for me just writing to him saying, hey, dude, you're knocking me off. What's going on? I got two guitars. He sent me two of them and $7,000 check and said the, the line has been discontinued. They're not going to make any more. He goes, if things change and we decide to make more, he goes, now I have your contact. I'll get in touch with you. They made, I don't know, like 400 or 500 He Enough to send me a $7,000 check and two guitars. I gave one to my friend who's the lawyer, and I kept one. So hmm. they, they were just – they took my original sketch, kind of turned it a little bit more into a graphic, uh, like, you know, paintable graphic, and just made it like a silkscreen painted graphic. I think it was actually a printed lithograph that was embedded in the paint. That's exactly what it was. So – and then, and then they changed my name. So on the website, too, that's the other thing I asked for. I was like, anytime this guitar appears on your website or in, your, in your, your photo gallery, please attribute it to me as the designer. And they did that, too. 
So they it's are, like uh, it's uh, like Timmy Timmy de Blesta. Yeah. <laughs> it's like wait a second. But you want to hear a funny another funny story? But I'm sorry, I keep remembering this aspects of this company. Same company. Now go back to 1990 when I'm working on this idea with them. When I first meet them, I give them a little page that I make on a color copier of all my guitar designs. And now I'm, I'm communicate communicating with them for now like six, eight months. I made a couple of guitars through them for my friend Adam. Then we still working on my design and Matt sends, he goes, hey dude, I'm, I'm mailing you the new catalog. I'm like, oh great. So now it's like six, eight months after I met them. He mails me the new catalog and I'm flipping through the new catalog of ESP guitars like 1992. And there is my guitar. There's my guitar. Same thing, a, a, a guitar that I carved that they took and made into a graphic on the front of a guitar. And I call it Matt. I go, Matt, hey, it's Jimmy. Yeah. Um, is my page that I gave you last year? He goes, yeah, it's right here on my desk. I go, where's your new catalog? He goes, oh, it's right here on my desk. I go, go to page 10. I go, you see my guitar on my page? like the second one up? He goes, yeah. I go, now look at page 10. He goes, oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so, I don't know how this happened. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed. He basically knocked off my graphic that I came up with and made it a... So there again, that was the very first time. That was the first story. What I just told was the second story, you know, 20 years later. So there again, he gave me a guitar and he, he paid me for it. So he, he blamed that one and this one both on his administration and people that just didn't know better. He honestly said this new version that he knocked off, he said he just he lost touch with me and he had no idea where to find me. And I wasn't on YouTube yet, so I wasn't like popular. So anyway, yeah. I, I think sometimes you can just go back to them and talk to them, you know. I went back and talked to this so-called company. Yeah, that's the original one that I made that Dave's showing on, on camera. Um, when, when, when I went back to this company that Bob brought this whole conversation up about, apologized up to Yin Yang. I can't believe this happened. Everybody was pointing fingers at each other internally in the company. And now here it is five months later and they just did it to you, Bob. And they're all doing the same thing, pointing at each other saying, oh my God, I didn't know. I didn't know where the content came from. I didn't know. Yeah, I, they've been very apologetic, and they did take the video down, but the response was very like, oh, it just ended up in this folder. I was editing whatever was in the folder, or, you know, th I mean, they were apologetic, but there were still excuses. There was no just like, look, we made a bad choice. Like, and, like and that's I said, what I want to hear. And like I said, the content wasn't theirs. Yeah. It's not like you work for the company, and they're going through, and they're like, oh, who's this guy? Like, it's not their content. I made the joke. I'm like, oh, if I open my closet and I'm, there's a dress, I'm just going to put the dress on because someone put a dress in my closet. <laughs> I mean, I made that analogy. I mean, it's ridiculous for them to say that. There's no excuses. I think that I think that they're just shady from the getty up because they did it seven times now over the course of like two years. Jimmy, that yeah. wasn't your exact quote before we hit the record button. <laughs> What was it? I forget. <laughs> that was the family-friendly version yeah. of the quote, I think. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Bob and I went to VidCon last year, and Destin from Smarter Every Day did an amazing talk on stolen content and yeah. uh, Facebook stuff. And the uh, what I got from it was, you know, I, I've been lucky. I haven't had too much stolen, and what has been stolen has been taken down immediately. But uh, it was just like, send them an invoice. Don't even ask them to take it down. Do a screen capture, get proof of it, and then send them an invoice. Yep. Yeah, and that's what I did this time. And yeah. they actually offered to pay some, not what I would ask. But, yeah, um, yeah and he's had actually had success getting money out of stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his talk was excellent. And he has a whole process because he has to deal with it. And people of his size, his channels of his size, have to deal with it so often uh, that – you know, he has a whole process for getting what he's due from these people who just rip. In fact, I talked to him on the phone today and he has a new thing that he's working on that I'm not going to say anything about because he's really excited about it. And he said, I've been working on this for a couple of years and I know as soon as I put it up, it's going to get ripped off and it's going to be on this site and it's going to be on this site. It's going to be on this site and I can't do anything about it. Oh, <laughs> I'm man. like, man, that's <laughs> such a bummer. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, that's yeah, why people so, ask me why I put my name on everything and that's the main reason why. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't have anything like useful I guess to say about the topic. The moral, the moral, the moral of this story is like if you do get knocked off, just open a conversation with them. Make sure you have all your proof and all your ducks in a row, and then go knock on their door and say, "Hey," because the re I, the examples I shared two times with the same guy over twenty five years, he was extremely apologetic, and he, he the first time it happened, he said he just sent some one of the guys in the company didn't know they were knocking me off they were knocking me off but he didn't know that i was friends with the company 
He goes, oh, mm. my guy in Japan knocked you off. He didn't know that we knew you. He just stole your design. Because I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have a better excuse than that. So, anyway, yeah. just I think the moral I mean, of the story is just open a conversation with these people. You know, open the door with proof in your hands and say, hey, look, look what's going on here. How do we solve this? Yeah. It gets a little... And as far as like the... Go ahead. I'm going to... You go ahead. I, I was going to take a left turn. Well, I was going to say, as far as like the designs and stuff, because we kind of skipped around that, I guess. Um, like, I... I intentionally, or I, not intentionally, but I have the expectation that when I put a design of any of my videos, like I'm showing how to make a thing. So if, for me to not expect people to make that thing would be kind of stupid, I think. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, and people are nice enough to ask, you know, do you mind if I make this and or make my own version of it or whatever? And that's great. I, I think we've talked about this maybe in the past where if somebody's going to sell a thing that you designed, it's really nice to have some, you know, uh, kind of have them call back to like, this is so-and-so's design. I'm going to build it and sell it. And that for me personally, that's perfectly fine. Like I don't care if people make money on the things that I'm freely showing. Yeah. How to make. I mean, I want people um, to copy me, you know, in a YouTube video, but when a factory ramps up and starts making it, then, then we should have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Even in my books, I encourage people to make these and sell them. If you can make this bandsaw box or this cutting board and you can make money off of it so you can buy more tools and do more woodworking, please do. Um, I think where it gets a little weird is, uh, in woodworking, it's like, what's generic and then what is actually somebody's design? Like if you go to make a dresser, it, there's kind of a generic, it's like, it's a box with five drawers. You know, yeah. um, what what makes that uh, generic and what makes that somebody's design? So, you know, throwing throwing a Seattle Seahawks logo on on the top there that is definitely the wrong thing to do. You don't. Uh, I see a lot of people, especially on like um, uh, what's what's the site where people sell Etsy. You'll see like branded stuff. I'm like, mm, I don't think you got the permission from yeah to, yeah to do that. Yeah, putting like um, any team logos. A lot of people do that. They make cornhole boards with logos on them and stuff, yeah. which I understand. But you have to understand that the that you are actually taking trademarked material and putting it on something and selling it without permission. And it's the exact same thing as if you were to make, you know, imagine I made some like CNC something or other signs that had Star Wars written all over it. Disney would come after me actively if they saw me making money on selling a product with intellectual property on it. And that's a different thing to, for me to make a costume or make one of those signs for myself, you know, they're not going to come after you for that. Um, Unless you're a smelly yeah, tree company. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, that they still doesn't make sense. Me, but, and that's a big thing, like in the prop community, um, <clears throat> you know, people who make their own costumes, I've never heard, and granted, my, my experience is limited in that community, but I've never heard of someone making themselves a costume and then like a video game company or Disney or you know, one of those production companies coming after them being like, you can't make a costume. But when somebody's making kits for, you know, character X and they're selling those kits, uh, there is, that's like a gray area and they often get cease and desist letters from those companies telling them that they, they shouldn't, even if that company doesn't provide that particular, that kit, you know, it's not like they're really competing in sales, but it's still just a property. They, they don't have, uh, access to sell about so mm-hmm. just be careful with that um so on both sides of that whole topic just be careful <clears throat> i'm done with that you got anything else <laughs> that's it okay thank you for letting be me nice. rant everybody <laughs> don't buy don't buy that tool from that company yeah <laughs> <laughs> that one we're not gonna name it's a you, good tool and that's the bummer yeah, about it it's, it's a uh, pos it yeah. is. It's an okay tool and i enjoy using it uh, and i'm it's just kind of a bummer that it's i painted so mine white <laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> I will anyway. paint it white and I'll use it in a video in a month. <laughs> Bob. Yes. What's your oh, okay. what's your favorite food? Favorite food. Um <laughs> food type or specific food? You interpret it the way you want to. Pizza. Pizza. Mm. Yes. Yep. So this we're is gonna, gonna play a new yeah this Go this is gonna start off uh, this the second half of the show we're just gonna do uh, uh, laser round what do you call it we're, we're real quick favorites favorites laser favorites laser favorites I like that. and uh, whoever it's like seven minute dating <laughs> exactly 
So, uh, so we're, I we're asked Bob go in a circle. what his favorite yeah. food was. And so then Bob then picks the next person to ask what their favorite whatever is. We're just going to go in a circle. It's like the first thing that comes in your brain. You got to right. answer fast. Can't think about it too much. Cool? Yep. yep. Jimmy, favorite type of vehicle? Pickup truck. I can't deny it. I used to like Mercedes Benzes and Cadillacs and like fancy cars. But now I just love pickup trucks with a fancy interior. Like gold interior? No, How well, fancy well like talking? leather. I have to have leather seats no matter what, and they have to be powered. Sometimes I have to be heated, and sometimes I have to have, like, moving mirrors. But, yeah, <laughs> so I need a Cadillac and a pickup truck is what I need, basically, every time. That's an Escalade, right? That's what Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got, the, I got the LTZ. LT is, like, the regular car, and the Z denotes, you know, fancy. D- Z basically is, like, to get that Z on the back of the pickup truck costs, like, another $8,000. That's what I have. <laughs> The trim package. Nice. That's right. Me? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Bob, who is your favorite drummer? Ooh. Dang. Yeah. Good one. Um, Going deep. Darren King. Aaron who is King? That? I don't know who that is. Darren King is the drummer for Darren. Mute Math, mm. and he is an absolute monster. He's amazing. Wow. If you've never heard him. He's, he actually has a YouTube channel where he does uh, drum solo stuff, where he just like he'll play along with the track. And he's unbelievable. Hmm. Yeah. Like you've seen Animal from the Muppets. Yeah, he's that, but he's <laughs> perfectly on time every single time. I, I'd like to get a couple brownie points here. Go ahead. Okay. Somebody asked me who my favorite drummer is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, who's, David, your who's your favorite drummer, drummer, Dave? <laughs> oh, that would be Kelly Johns, my wife. Oh, oh. that's super sweet. <laughs> She's a lot like Animal too. Except, no, I'm just... <laughs> well, you know why I asked that? Because about a, I guess about two weeks ago, I was I got lost in a. In a in a black hole on YouTube of drummers, like Buddy Rich and these guys, how good they were, and they would have drum offs at like these drum festivals at like a jazz festival. If you guys have any interest in it, Google drum festival and like Buddy Rich and these guys from like the sixties and seventies, and how amazing they were. I could listen to that all day long. Nice. Okay, okay. David, what is your favorite? Ah, I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> favorite color. What is your favorite type of shoe? <laughs> There's a reason. There's a reason I'm asking this. Okay. My uh I, and I and I can't wear them anymore. But my favorite is Chuck All Stars. But I've been having oh. over the last couple of years some back issues. And so I've been wearing Nike running shoes, which has actually helped my problems quite a bit. Wow. That's actually why I was asking. Because <laughs> I also have switched to Nike running shoes in the shop, and it helps quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wear Bluntstones all full time, all the time. Bluntstones. <laughs> Blunt. Bluntstones. Mm-hmm. A lot of people ask because they can see my feet sometimes. Bluntstones are just slip on shoes. They're kind of derived, made in Australia. They just I hate laces. Anything with laces, I do not want. Taylor always is like, oh look at these, they're nice. I'm like, they're they're in the lace category. Got to cut them. Anything with laces, I like slip-ons. I can't I don't have time for laces. <laughs> I don't have time for that. <laughs> Jimmy. All right. Yeah. Would you rather work outside or inside? Outside, all the time, every day, every minute, even in the rain. Even right. when it's 15 degrees out, right? Yep. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Who asked what? I go now? Yep. Yeah, you go. Okay. Um, Dave, what is your favorite car, since we know it's not the Impala? <laughs> well, uh, it's a car. Uh, c- can I say my future car? I, yeah. A Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee. Oh, cool. uh, ma- Jeeps are made here in Toledo, or some Jeeps are made here in Toledo. And um, I've never owned one, but I want that that connection with the with the local community, and and oh, it's just a cool look, looking vehicle. So, right yeah, Jeep. we just got the Jeep Wrangler Sport just before Christmas. Yeah, yeah and I, I got a little it. jealous. Yeah, it's great. It's great. We love it. It's a bit. It's a bit like, it's like driving a go kart. Like if you've ever been to like on a on a small go kart as an adult, when all of a sudden you're like, wow, that's really jerky. Mm. Like you turn and like immediately like you're in the oncoming car. You know, like you, you go like this. Like if you tune the radio, like all the of the steering's a, tight. Yeah, you tune the radio. All of a sudden, you head on with another truck. You got to like be really careful. And like and you overcompensate and you want to flip over into the ditch. So you just got to be careful on those Jeep Jeep Wranglers. Bob. Yes. CNC, laser cutter, or 3D printer? Which one would you take with you on vacation? <laughs> F. Mary Kill. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Um, CNC. Hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just it's just way more versatile, I think, than the other two put together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's it's not my favorite to use, and it's not like my favorite tool or anything. But if I was going to be stranded on a desert island, des- deserted, <laughs> desert, deserted, mm, desert island, I would yeah, on a desert island, <laughs> um, I would rather have a CNC than those other two things. I think it'd just be more useful. Well, it's not the right answer, but I accept it. <laughs> now, what would your answer be? Then? Uh, you know, um, right now I'm just there is no right answer, of course. But I'm really into the I'm really into the laser cutting. I've been just kind of consumed with all these different cool things people are doing on Pinterest right now, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But if you're on a desert island, um, <laughs> what would you do with the laser to survive? I guess you could start fires easier. easier oh no, no, no. Uh, well, the question was, which one would you take on vacation? <laughs> I know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, deserted island. I'm, I'm taking. I'm, I'm taking the CNC because there's more you can do with it. I could cut down a oh. coconut tree and make some beautiful palm wood weapons. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. beautiful weapons. Okay, uh, me, Jimmy. What was your favorite? Uh, section of school, elementary, middle, or high high school. No college, because I know that was your favorite. Um, when I was uh, when when I got to middle school, I remember being jealous of my older brothers because when I got to middle school, they didn't have it in elementary school, but they had shop. So I was able to finally go to shop and like kind of be like my dad and make stuff with other students. And I talked about this in an interview recently, but from the minute I got into the shop class, it was sort of it, it was like it, it was like understood that I knew what I was doing, that I came from a family that I was able to use tools early on. So I was always kind of like the shop's assistant, the shop teacher's assistant in a way. But when I got to shop class and I remember walking across the hall and looking and I'm like, what is this? They're like, oh, this is the metal shop. And I was so intimidated by it and I wanted to be there, but I never, ever got into metal work until kind of now on YouTube. But as a kid, I wish I had gone across the hall and got more into metal shop. I remember the kid this kid made this big spider web and he welded the words cheap trick across the spider web. And, and it was all like polished with a grinder. And I was just like, that I'm like, wow, I'll never be able to make that. I just know wood. And so now here I am. Mm. Yeah. Nice. And, and then in, going into high school, also same thing, shop class. So that was, shop class was my favorite part of being in, in high school. Nice. Me? Um, yeah. Uh, 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 okay, so you guys talk. We used to have a thing in some crummy local radio station. They called Desert Island Discs. And it basically meant, like, what would be the last album you would need? You would have to take 10 albums with you on this radio thing. But so, Bob, let's say y- you have to take two albums and Dave, you have to take two albums. What would be mm. the two albums you would take? One or two. Like, the last, you got to listen to this for the rest of your life mm. until the ship comes and rescue you. One of mine would be OK Computer by Radiohead. Um, oh, I don't know what the second one would be, though. Wouldn't be Taylor Swift? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. That's hard. Two albums, huh? David, what do you got? Well, we discussed it a couple weeks ago. I think I'd had to take Nirvana's In Euro, one of my favorite oh, yeah. albums That's of all right. time. Um, the, uh, Another one that... It's just, it's so mind-blowing it, good is, is a guy named Hayden, and they had a song back in like 1995 called, um, or the album was called Everything I Long For, and it's just this slow, depressing acoustic stuff, and it was recorded in his parents' house up, up in his bedroom, and it's just, it's lo-fi it's just brilliantly done you can sing along to the entire thing and you feel like crap afterwards it's just <laughs> so good hayden everything i long for that sounds wonderful <laughs> you know <laughs> and there's, like a, there's, a, there's always this the the thing with albums what becomes your favorite album or your favorite group it really depends on what was going on in your life because you yeah. uh, con- you connect that with 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 those things you know there's yeah there's that that tie-in that nostalgia Bob, second one. Anything yet? Anything ringing a bell? I'll tell you mine quick. Um, I, just of- I, I man, I got a. I don't know that I could narrow it down. Well, I think to counter the Radiohead thing, I think I would probably have to take like "Ill Communication" by Beastie Boys or something. Oh, you know, wild. Yeah. Polar. So I have like a really big range of I don't know. 
That's a guess. Well, I love anything by Nick Cave. Uh, not to be too esoteric, but in my older years, I like can't live without Nick Cave and his songwriting abilities. And so anything from Nick Cave and anything from Chet Baker. So oh. jazz, oh. jazz and emo. I love them both. Nick Cave still nice. does some awesome stuff. This, He's to incredible. This day. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So which one of us takes the question since we both had a question? Mm. Dave. Mm. All right. So uh, my next question is, Jimmy? I'm here. Which, uh, what's your favorite uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Pizza, pizza, pizza. Oh. Did I hear? <laughs> no, no. Did I, did I ask you the food one already? No, no me. okay. I okay. love I love spicy food. So I, I actually I was going to do a piece of my vlog about this place I eat at for the last twenty five years called Punjab Delhi. It's like a taxi stand in New York where all the taxi cab drivers go. They're all mostly Afghani's. I, I love spicy food. Hmm. So I mean, I love pizza with hot sauce on them. I, I love Taylor and I both love hot spicy food. So we I had Indian the other day with my buddies who were in from Kentucky, and we went. And we had curry vindaloo, and it was great. So anything super spicy, I love. On anything, it could be chicken, bread, rice. It's great. So that's really. If I had to pick one food to eat forever, it would probably be Indian, Afghanistan, well, Middle Eastern food. Well, hmm. the question was, what? Not the not the food that you'd pick. Oh, but would you rather have breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Oh, I I typically eat like uh, like a late lunch. That's usually I I hardly ever eat breakfast. I usually eat at like three o'clock, and then I'll eat it like again at like one a.m. That's usually how I because my whole entire day is like skewed. <laughs> Your solid one meal a day guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I got one, uh, David. Yeah. Favorite guitar you've ever played? Uh, there's this 1964 Supro that's sitting behind me right now. This guitar uh, was once owned by Joe Walsh, and before that, it was owned or after that, no. it was owned by another guy named Michael Stanley, and. Um, it's it's one of the very few things I have in my life where I have this emotional connection to, because back in uh, like 2002, I was playing in a band. And I didn't own a guitar. I had to borrow guitars, and my dad thought that was silly. How can you play in a band and not own a guitar? I was broke at the time, eating ramen noodles, and um, he's like, "Let's go on a trip." And we went on a road trip to Cleveland. We went to a bunch of different little vintage guitar shops, and I picked up that guitar, and. Uh, the the clerk was like, that guitar used to be owned by Joe Walsh. I'm trying to make this story real quick because it's a long story. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And I played it. And he's like, nope, it was really owned by Joe Walsh. This is my last day. I'm quitting this job. And I'd like to get you out of here so I can go home. And so he sold me the guitar like super cheap. And threw in uh, a case and some uh, a guitar pedal and picks and batteries and guitar <laughs> straps cool. and everything. He hated his job. He hated this place. <laughs> and so That's he great. like I, I, I was gonna pay full. Uh, my dad was gonna pay full ticket price for that guitar and ended up paying half because this guy hated his job. And uh, <laughs> wow. yeah, so it's uh, good timing. Yeah, it's That's I love it. I, I, I it's the one thing if if there was a fire after after pets and people people and pets. I would grab the guitar. <laughs> Clarify the word. <laughs> Do you have like a sticker on the window for the Sorry, fireman? Kelly, you're on your own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Me and Weens are out of here. <laughs> guitar finder. You need that sticker on your window. Guitar I finder. do, yeah. <laughs> that um, was actually a, a question that somebody else submitted that I think would be a funny... Well, I mean, you already answered yours, but yeah, that would be a... Yeah. Uh, uh, is it my turn? So, what else we got? Whose turn is it? Well, I have a, I have an, an extension to that one. What's the favorite music your favorite music store that you've ever been in? Oh, um, mm, Guitar Center is definitely the wrong answer. That place is <laughs> awful to go to. If you if if you are uh, if you've never been into a Guitar Center and you want to punish yourself, just walk into one for like ten minutes because it's like twenty people playing guitar all at the same time at this insanely loud volume and it's they're not playing together. They're just all testing guitars and it's noisy and there's just so much visual stimulation that like you just leave feeling drunk. Um yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the Walmart of music stores. It is the is Walmart is. of music stores, yeah. Um boy, I don't know I don't have a I don't have a good answer for it. I like um I like used vintage stuff, so whatever I guess whatever I can I don't have a good answer. Sorry. Gotcha. Whose turn? My turn? Sure. All right. Uh, I guess for both you guys, boxers or briefs? 
I wear yeah. boxer briefs actually. Yeah, me too. Boxer <laughs> briefs. Me too. Actually, I wear I, I same thing, and I, I wear a brand by. They happen to be by Levi's. I'm sure they're just a licensed brand, but it's the Levi's brand that Taylor's picks up for me, and they're the my favorite panties that I've been wearing for the last couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Boxer right. briefs with love, the with the Levi brand on them by Levi's. I would love to name this episode "Favorite Panties," but I just can't. <laughs> just like, can't. I, I, I just couldn't can't. do that. Right. Oh, anyway. yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play off that. Levi is one of my favorite brands. It's like I, I love their jeans and their and their shirts. So I'm gonna ask both of you: What are your favorite brands? Could be anything. Could be cars. Just your as a at brand as a as a company. Mm-hmm. I would say Levi's and Chevy. That's those would be my two oh. lifestyle brands if I can get for my YouTube sponsorship. If anybody knows anybody in those, <laughs> um, so anytime I talk to my agent, he's like, "Who should we be looking at?" I say Levi's and Chevy, and he never ever gets them. So they got hmm. to fall upon them. Um, I don't know. And then I don't know favorite brands. I mean, Make has been a tremendous brand for me. Is if you want to call it a brand, you know, it's been tremendous in my personal growth. Make magazine. So. Um, uh, Delta seems to be a brand that's like been hanging around me my entire life, but I don't even know them as a company anymore. I think they're out of business, Delta, because the, the name appears on many of the tools I grew up with my whole life. So I see that logo and it's warm and fuzzy, but I don't know that they're even in business anymore. Uh, that's a good qu- yeah. Is right? that, that's a good question. Yeah, I think they are. I think they're just you know they're under some un- other umbrella, one of the major yeah. tool brands. Uh, it's just at this point, a lot of that stuff is just they're rebranded. You know, versions of the same tool that you get for Porter Cable or mm. yeah, whatever. But um, for me, that's tough. I don't know. Um, I guess clothing-wise, I've always really liked uh, Columbia stuff because I like the utility of of what their clothes have been in the past. But I've also always made an effort to like not get attached to brand stuff, you know, brand names. And so I don't really have anything that super jumps out where I'm like, man, I really love whatever. You know, is that a Utrecht? Panties. Is that a Utrecht box in the back? It is. Yeah, I ordered some spray paint from there. Oh, yeah. Utrecht is a, a store that's been in my in the city for years. It's always been kind of the warm and fuzzy art store hmm. of uh, among the art stores. So that's that's like that logo is a good brand. Yeah, to me. So when it comes to brands, I um, <laughs> this is just one of the weird things about me that you know I overthink completely, but. So when I was growing up, I would, uh, you know how like everybody would shop, well, at least in my generation, everybody would shop at like American Eagle or Gap and all they sold were shirts with their logos on it. You can get like a hundred different version of American Eagle shirt and it's like, you know, the beach time with American Eagle and whatever with American (laughs) Eagle. And I've worked in, in college, I worked at American Eagle and at Gap. And I made every effort to not buy things that had their brands on them because it just drove me crazy like... If I'm paying money for a shirt, mm-hmm. why am I also a walking billboard for that brand? I should They should give me a shirt or pay me if they want me to wear their brand around all the time. Now, as someone who makes a living <laughs> have, having a brand, I understand that a little differently now. But I, And I also appreciate the fact that some people, you know, want to wear my brand as a way to support me and, like, help me, you know, get known and stuff. But that that kind of carried over into me, like... Uh, being kind of hesitant about how billboardy I am. In fact, right now I'm wearing a shirt of a brand, and this is one of the very few shirts that, that I have that have another company's logo on them. And I, just because I like this image, and that's really the only reason I'm wearing it. But even when it came down to once we started having kids, I kind of made the decision like if there are two plastic balls at Target, and one of them has Dora on it, and one of them is pink, and that's it. When you look at those, they're the same ball. They're printed separately in the same factory, and there's like a 50% markup on the one that has a character on it. And I decided when we had kids, like, I'm going to do everything I can to not fall into the trap of Mm. wasting money because something has a branded picture on it. Mm. And I know that may be stupid, but it's more of like a philosophy of like, why am I putting money where I don't actually need to put money just to have Mm -hmm. a brand name or to have a character or to have a, you know, licensed product? Anyway, I, Bob, I have a three-part question for you. Oh no! <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna travel down the same path here. Okay. When you were in bands, did you ever wear yes. your own band's T-shirt? No. Okay. When you go see a band, <laughs> do you ever wear the T-shirt of the band you're going to see? No. <laughs> 
As a maker and a self-employed person, do you ever wear your own T-shirt? I've never put on an I like to make stuff shirt, ever. Okay. <laughs> Respect. Me. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. Do those three things yeah. make yeah. they're in line, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You got There's, me, uh, we, <clears throat> So, in my younger days, we were going to see, I think it was the Beastie Boys, um, and I, I put on my Beastie Boys shirt. And my my friends are like, you can't be that guy. You can't be that guy. And I was like, wait, what? No, you can't wear the shirt of the band that you're going to see. So yeah, I've yeah. I've learned. Now, now the the I guess it was the last band I was in. Our singer would wear our shirt sometimes, and we had a we had an icon that we used as our logo, and it didn't have the name on it, so it was just like a cool looking icon. And so I, it didn't upset me that he wanted to wear it because I mean it's a you know good shirt, but it's like <laughs> I just. I don't know. I can't get myself to do that. And it makes total sense to do that. It's self-promotion. I mean, you're trying to get yourself out there. I'm not, like, disparaging anybody that does that. It's just, like, I don't know. There's something on the inside of me that won't let me do that. Jimmy, would you ever wear something that says Duresta? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Wait. If I didn't, would this... you ever put your name on stuff? <laughs> <laughs> this hat I'm wearing today is my friend. my friends in the New York City uh, Emergency Service Police Department. So this is... A camouflage hat with their logo on it. So I'm wearing this in honor of my buddy Steve. But uh, I just, yeah, I, I change my hat like every couple of weeks. And I always resort back to a Duresta cap in case people out in the public don't remember my name. <laughs> <laughs> and fun. if they don't, you'll just like pull out your stencil and spray paint your name on their forehead. And then they remember. For I, was, I was at an auto zone up here in, in the Catskills. And I walk in to buy a headlamp replacement bulb. And the guy goes, oh, Duresta. I watched that guy on YouTube. And I go, I am that guy. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, my God, you are that guy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he amazing. turned bright That's red that he didn't, he was embarrassed that he didn't recognize me. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he was, quote, starstruck. But uh, we chatted for a minute. But I, it was just so funny. He goes, I watched that guy on YouTube. I go, I am that guy. And he looked and he goes, oh, my God, it is you. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you should have said, yeah, me too. He's weird. And then, like, walked out. <laughs> okay. Don't make this weird, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> but what's your favorite thing in your pocket right now? Um, you know what? This, 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 uh, my ice pick, of course, but this is really my favorite object is my, is my leather man. It's the one that I put the big clip on that confuses people because they don't like, doesn't it hurt your hand? Um, but this is the one I made in the video, maybe three over three years ago now. This is definitely my favorite object. And like when it's not near me, like when I'm going down to sleep, I always have to have it like on the <laughs> nightstand or uh. I'm always like... <laughs> Did you see my? Did you see my my leather man? Like, so I asked that question four hundred times a day. <laughs> the tailor. Did you see you my should, leather man? There's a sewing project. You can sew a little tiny pocket in your pillow, so you can put the leather man <laughs> in your pillow when you go to sleep. And this is my other favorite object. This is a, a flashlight from Streamlight, and the mm. and they make good flashlights. But the best thing about it is that it has a mini USB charger in it. See that? Oh, nice. So when I'm driving, it's always charging, and I don't have to go and find stores that sell AAA batteries anymore. So I always just like randomly throw it on the charger when I'm driving because I'm in the car a lot. And it's, I, I used to always wear a hat with a light in it, but now I just carry this flashlight and I wrap tape around the end of it so I can hold it in my teeth. Yeah. And you have tape that you can use whenever you need it. And the yeah. tape is in my other pocket. No. Mm. But, yeah, my leather man is like the one thing that, I'm, that I always love to have on me. Yeah, that tape trick. I learned it from one of you two. I don't remember, but then since then, it was a Jimmy. Uh, yeah. I uh, I put gaffer's tape all around all my tripods, and so it's always always right there with oh, me yeah. when I. Yeah. Yep. Smart. Uh, all right, we want to do any more? We're we're running long. Let's do a couple more. Okay. If so, you can have one. This is uh, for me. I'm trying to think of a, a good question um, for both of you. City. Or country? Country. City. Small city. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I like the best of both worlds myself. I'm about to go country, but I'm also going to be a city mouse too. <laughs> <laughs> is there, David, is there something you don't like about the country or you just enjoy the city stuff more? Uh, well, I grew up in the country and... Um, and then I then I moved into a small town. Then I moved into a slightly larger town. And then now I live in Toledo, which is a city, but it's a small city. And I just like the convenience of everything is right here, especially um, for someone like me who's not very good at planning. And I need to make four trips to Home Depot every day. It's just nice and convenient. 
Yeah. Makes sense. I could see that for myself too. Cool. You got anything else? Any other burning questions? No. no. Home Depot or Lowe's? <laughs> oh, we can't do that. I don't have a preference. It's whatever's closer to me. At my at the previous place that I lived, Lowe's was closer, so I went there. Here, it's it's Home Depot. Um, mm-hmm. It's just because it's right around the corner. When I went, yeah, now when none of us are sponsored by any of those guys, but I do find Lowe's a little bit more of a pleasant experience hmm. in every city that I visited them in. Just on a generality. Do you guys have Menards where you guys are? No, but I know who they are. Yeah. They're yeah, great. The, uh, yeah. There's a couple here in this area and it's like twice as big, maybe not twice as big, but bigger than Home Depot. Their plywood selection is uh, far greater and better. Huh. Mm-hmm. I've heard that name, but I've, I've never been in one. Yeah, here, I'm kind of the same way, David. Like, I don't have a preference, but the Home Depot is, is way closer. Actually, there's a Home Depot that's pretty close to me. And then the other, the Lowe's, has a Home Depot right next to it. Like, you pull into the parking <laughs> lot, and it's the same parking lot for the two stores, oh, which is, I've never seen anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but there's a big divider down the middle of it. So you have to, when you pull in, you have to decide which one you're going to go to. <laughs> and, like, you can't drive in front of both of them. If I was going to make a bat house, which one would I go to? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cool. Well, anybody watching anything cool? Any good recommendations for uh, anything? So my recommendation this week is it's a local TV channel's YouTube channel. And, oh, man, I had the window open, and then I had to restart my computer. Um, it is called BCAN, the Buckeye Cable Arts Network. And my buddy Eric, uh, who is my cameraman, he now hosts a show on that channel, and it's all about the local music scene. And not just the local music scene, but it's just about music. A lot of it's going to be about the local bands and, and uh, touring bands coming through and um, some of the music history. And the first episode came out last night, and th- their YouTube channel, they're putting up little segments on there. So we'll put a, a link in the show notes. And Eric is Eric's the perfect host for this TV show. He's so good. Mm. Nice. What you got, Jimmy? Nothing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for something that i liked i can't remember what it was called so um, well, i'll go, yeah, go while on. you're looking yeah so i mentioned earlier you were talking about um uh drummers and stuff so this guy named darren king is the drummer for mute math and i'm going to put a link to his his channel uh in the show notes but also to mute math and whether you like the style of their music or not i'm i think it's great and i think they have a really they're an incredible band but whether you like that or not, at least listen to some of it and listen to his drumming. So actually, watch a video. That's better. Watch a video of him drum because it's it's just crazy, like how tight and how good he is. But he moves around like a crazy person. <laughs> so I've seen them in concert, I think, nine times, maybe ten. And best shows of any band I've ever seen. They're unbelievable live. And so when he comes out on stage, he takes these big headphones like big you know full ear cover ones like i'm wearing right now and takes a roll of gaffers tape and puts it on his chin and wraps it around his headphones and around his head like five or six times and wraps and tapes his headphones on his head because he moves around so much and halfway through the show they're falling off he's (laughs) he's just crazy he'll like uh i've seen him they do this a bunch of times but in the middle of a song they'll kind of slow it down and do like a drum break like a percussion solo type thing and he'll pick up a cymbal or a snare drum and climb over his drum set and climb onto the keyboard and keep playing drums the entire time and he's playing on the mic stands and he's playing on the piano and he's playing on the everything and he'll do a full drum solo away from the drum set oh nice it's it's crazy yeah i've seen him like uh crowd surf over the crowd with a snare drum playing drums while he's going it's just yeah they're a lot of fun and really really good so i'm gonna put them in the notes uh, I can't find what I wanted to talk about, but I, I did see something that I talked about before, but I'm just going to give him one more shout out. I've talked about tips from a shipwright. It's uh, Lou Swazel, and he just finished building his boat after, I think, 30 episodes, and he built this incredibly beautiful boat out of oak. It's really heavy. It's a, it's a skiff. He calls it a skiff, but it ends up being this beautiful boat made out of wood, hand-painted, all handcrafted. 
very, very simple in his approach, and he's a very practical woodworker guy. He's extremely skilled. He's been doing it his entire life, and he's got to be 70, maybe 65, 70. And he's just a great character. So check out Tips from a Shipwright, and his check out his last series. They did some beautiful drone shots of him flying around. And I was supposed to go up to Rhode Island Saturday to watch the launch of this boat, but I wasn't able to make it. But I am going to try and do something with these guys this summer and try and do a collaboration with them. So Sweet. Oh, check awesome. them out. Cool. Well, uh, before we go, I want to thank our sponsors, our you know, supporters, not sponsors. I guess they're sponsors on Patreon. Um, and we're really grateful. We actually had a conversation today. <laughs> I don't know if we should say this. I had a conversation today with uh, a company about doing sponsor stuff on the podcast. And my my answer to them was like, you know, our Patreon people take care of us. And I mean, I'm not opposed to sponsorship, but we don't really need it because we have the support of the people that listen to the show and that's amazing that's huge um, i wouldn't want to turn down money i'm not saying that but <laughs> we don't need it right we don't need sponsors because to to make to keep the show going because we have you guys on patreon and that's amazing so yeah thank you for that thank you um, and if you want to join that crew of people uh go to patreon.com slash making it and you can help us out there you know even a dollar a month or whatever would be fantastic It'd be great yeah I think that's it. Yes. I'm done. I'm cool. Done. Jimmy. I what's love- your favorite way to what's your favorite way to end the show? <laughs> I say I love you. <laughs> Bob? Bob. Yes. yes. I love you. I love you too, Jimmy. Oh, there you go. You're not turning too red this time. That's good. <laughs> I'm, this is a ser- everyone's gotta try this. When you're with a, I have a friend of mine, Steve, who won't say it back. He, he, no matter what, I guess Steve say, say I love you because I'm not saying it. And he like scurries away. <laughs> <laughs> so try that on somebody. Try that on somebody you love and see how, how nervous it makes him. Nice. Cool. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.